Welcome to the component Introduction to Computer Science, Networks. This is Lecture B. The component Introduction to Computer Science provides a basic overview of computer architecture, data organization, representation, and structure, the structure of programming languages, and networking and data communication. It also includes some basic terminology from the world of computing. The objectives for this unit on networks are to define what a communication network is, explain the purposes and benefits of a communication network, explain the Internet and the World Wide Web, their histories and their structures, describe different ways of connecting to the Internet, explain the basics of network addressing, Internet protocol or IP addresses and domain names, and how they can be leased or purchased from an Internet service provider, introduce network classification by the coverage size, Describe different network topologies. Outline different standards and protocols that govern wired and wireless communications. Describe the benefits and disadvantages of wireless communication. Describe a typical wireless network setup. Describe network hardware. And finally, to introduce networking logical models and discuss the Open Systems Interconnection, or OSI model. We start this lecture with a discussion of the Internet Protocol, or IP. All Internet communication uses IP addressing. The Internet expects each communicating device, known as a host, to possess an IP address. An example of a communicating device is a computer that sends information to the Internet when the user sends an email. On the other hand, a computer receives information from the Internet when the user receives an email. Currently, two versions of IP exist. IP version 4, or IPv4, defines an IP address as a 32-bit number and therefore establishes a theoretical limit on the number of available addresses at 2 to the 32nd power, or approximately 4.3 times 10 to the 9th power addresses. The first version of IPv4 was deployed for production in the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, or ARPANET, in 1983. We know that we will run out of 32-bit addresses soon, however IPv4 is still in use. An example of an IPv4 address would be 192.168.10.1. IP version 6, or IPv6, was designed to address the limitations of IPv4. Its addresses are 128-bit, which means that, theoretically, it can provide 2 to the power of 128, or approximately 3.4 times 10 to the power of 38 addresses. IPv6 was commercially deployed in 2006, and many institutions have migrated to it. It is expected to eventually replace all IPv4 addresses. Unlike IPv4, which uses decimal numbers, IPv6 uses hexadecimal numbers. The hexadecimal numeral system, also known as hex, uses 16 characters, 0 through 9 and A through F. A through F represent the numbers 10 through 15. A corresponds to 10, B corresponds to 11, C corresponds to 12, and so on through the letter F. The slide shows a typical IPv6 address. An IP address can be public or private. A public IP address is assigned to every computer that connects to the Internet. Every computer connected to the Internet has to have a unique IP address, so there cannot exist two computers with the same public IP address in the entire Internet. A public IP address is assigned to the computer by the Internet Service Provider as soon as the computer is connected to the Internet Gateway. ISPs purchase public IP addresses from regional organizations responsible for managing public IP addresses. Then, companies or households lease public IP addresses from the ISPs. Private IP addresses are used for computers within a private network, including home, school, or business LAN, or an intranet. ISPs lease IP addresses to subscribers. Homes or business networks usually use private IP addressing. The ISP typically leases one public IP address for each location. The ISP's equipment is provided with a public IP address to connect to the ISP's public network. The ISP also provides equipment with a private IP address so that it can connect to the home or business network. There are dynamic and static IP addresses. A dynamic IP address is temporary and changes periodically. For example, when you reboot an ISP's equipment, such as a cable modem router, it will probably boot back up with a different IP address than it had previously. 
ISPs generally provide customers with a dynamic IP address because dynamic IP addresses are more cost-effective. And, having a dynamic IP address makes it trickier to remotely access your computer. A static IP address does not change. Devices assigned to a static IP address always have the same IP address. A static IP address can be leased from an ISP. It costs more than leasing a dynamic IP address, with monthly charges ranging from approximately $5 to $100. Most websites use static IP addresses so that their domain name will be reliably mapped to one IP address. Imagine if the domain name of the White House, www.whitehouse.gov, had a dynamic IP address. The IP address would constantly change. This would mean that the world's domain name system, or DNS, servers would have to keep track of those changes. That would be pretty tough to do. Another example of a user needing an IP address that does not change is the network administrator who is working from home. No discussion of network communication is complete without adding some thought to domain names and their use. Networks and the Internet support the use of domain names. Imagine trying to navigate the Internet using IP addresses rather than names. www.schoolname.edu is an example of a domain name. Because people remember names more easily than numbers, network engineers devise the Domain Naming System, or DNS, to allow people to use names in conjunction with IP addressing. According to Wikipedia, a domain name is an identification label that defines a realm of administrative autonomy, authority, or control of the Internet, based on the domain name system, or DNS. Therefore, in the example of a domain name, www.whitehouse.gov, it appears that this domain name tells us that the White House is responsible for the administration of this website. People and organizations can purchase a domain name from the Internet Corporation for assigned names and numbers, or ICANN. Domain names are comprised of three distinct pieces. The www portion of the domain name indicates this is a name associated with the World Wide Web. The domain name White House indicates a purchased domain name of White House. The suffix gov indicates a government entity type. Keep in mind that anyone can buy any available domain name with any extension, if a person or organization is willing to pay for it, and if the domain name is available. A domain name is available when another person or entity does not currently own it. When an entity's address ends with the .org or .gov or other extension, this does not prove that the entity actually is that type of organization. Therefore, without doing further research, could it be truthfully said that the White House of the United States of America owns www.whitehouse.gov? No, it would require more investigation to find out whether or not that was true. Finally, Government entities own a number of domain names with the .com extension. It is important to point out that each time a user navigates to a website using a browser, the computer must first determine the website's IP address. Therefore, navigating to www.whitehouse.gov requires the browser to first resolve that name to an IP address, and then, and only then, is the browser able to display the web page. One IP address for the White House appears on the slide. This website is probably associated with many IP addresses, one of which appears on the slide. To summarize this section on IP addresses and DNS, a browser has to contact a DNS server to translate a domain name to the IP address. All domain names map to an IP address. This information is stored on globally and privately owned DNS servers. Global DNS servers are root servers and work together to map the globe's domain names to specific IP addresses. Finally, when the browser learns the destination IP address from a DNS server, network communication finally begins. Networks can be classified by their size. Networks with small geographical areas of coverage are referred to as local area networks, or LANs. Note that the term small is arbitrary. However, a LAN is usually one company with one site. A home network could be referred to as a LAN. Wireless LANs are called WLANs. And, as mentioned previously, examples of LANs include a home and office space, one building, one floor in a building, or a small school with multiple buildings. In a local area network such as a home network, a number of devices need to communicate with each other. These devices must be interconnected, most likely using cabling, a switch, and an ISP router. Or, these devices might be interconnected using wireless technologies, 
in which case a wireless access point, or WAP, plugs into the switch. To understand how a local area network, or LAN, directs traffic, you need to know that the LAN uses more than IP addressing. LAN communication uses IP addressing and Media Access Control, or MAC addressing. The MAC address is stamped on a sticker on each installed network interface controller, or NIC. Switches use MAC addresses for intranet communications. The MAC address on a NIC has no meaning outside of the local network. All LAN communication uses MAC addressing. Switches consider IP addressing. If the destination address is an IP address unknown to the switch, then the switch will send that communication to the router. The router has to determine where that destination address is located using its routing tables. Now would be a good time to see an example of the MAC address of a NIC. Follow along on your own computer. First, open a command prompt. If you don't know how to do this, search the internet for instructions based on your operating system. Second, we will be using the ipconfig command. But before we do, you need to know a few things. There must be a space after the ipconfig command. After typing the space, you will type a slash, then the word all. The forward slash is known as a switch. The word all modifies the command to provide much more information than just executing the ipconfig command with no switch. We will need to press enter to run the command. The next slide will show you the entire command and have you type along with the instructions given. Type ipconfig space slash all and press enter to run the command. Compare what you see on your screen to what is shown on the slide. Find your MAC address and IPv4 address. The physical address is the MAC address associated with this specific NIC. Remember, the MAC address is used for local communication and the IP address is used for remote communication. Leave the command prompt window open to complete an exercise on an upcoming slide. There are two standard methods for network management, workgroups and domains. The workgroups method is used to manage small networks of, say, 10 to 20 devices. A workgroup is defined as a peer-to-peer -peer network in which computers can communicate and share data with each other. This is a simple network solution and does not require a server. No computer has control over another computer. To use any computer in the workgroup, users have an account on that computer. Domain-based networks do not have any limit on the number of devices in the network. Domain-based networks have one or more computers serving as domain controllers, or DCs. Domain controllers are usually referred to as servers. Network administrators use servers to control user accounts, security, domain rules, and much more. This makes it easy to implement changes because the changes are automatically applied to all computers. Any user with an account on the domain can log on to any computer within the domain. User accounts on individual computers are not needed. A network encompassing a large geographical area is called a Wide Area Network, or WAN. A WAN generally consists of one or more LANs. Remember that a LAN is a local area network and has a small geographic area. A WAN may exist within one company across multiple sites, for example. It may or may not have internet access. Some examples of WANs include a company with offices in Chicago and London, perhaps needing to share servers or printers and other devices. Five offices in the city of Portland. In other words, the offices are in the same city but in different locations within the city. Intel, Dell, and Microsoft joining their networks together in a limited manner to collaborate on the creation of a new product. Why would companies join together to create a WAN? A WAN can facilitate intercompany communications, permitting the companies to share confidential documents. If a large network is comprised of five offices spread across the same city, the network is referred to as a metropolitan area network, or a MAN. Again, the term large is arbitrary. A MAN is like a WAN, usually consisting of at least one LAN. An example would be a company with multiple physical sites, with one of the sites connected to the main office by fiber optic links or other high-speed media. The MAN, just like the WAN, may or may not have internet access for its devices. Examples of MANs include a company with many offices in the same city or a large college campus. This concludes Lecture B of Networks.
In summary, this lecture explained the basics of network addressing, IP addresses and domain names, different types of IP addresses, and how they can be leased or purchased. And it described the classification of networks by the coverage size and outlined two methods of local area network management.